and pull up, sure enough, the FBI report was there. He graduated in 2003 from the Baptist Bible College there. Independent, fundamental, under the canopy of the local church. Okay, he graduated there, and, and don't worry, I'm not through with them yet. You fasten your seat. I'm going to, I'm going to, I got more to say about them. You hang on tight. Uh, he basically graduated in 2003, apprehended in 2006, three years later. Who knows what he was doing while he was in Bible college? With all those bus kids he's dealing with, and Sunday school classes, and... And, uh, but they do background checks. Don't worry, they do a background check. Do they do a future check? Do they zoom into the future of 2006 when he was arrested with these images on his computer? Okay, and he, you know, then they, of course, they let him out. You know, they arrest him and then they let him go free while he's waiting trial and everything. Now he's going into federal prison for a whopping 27 months. Okay. Now, listen to me carefully, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna close with this. This is the Christian school teacher at a high school in Oregon. This is the guy who graduated from Bible college, an independent fundamental Baptist college that almost everybody has heard of. Now, now think with me for a moment. My sister was only at that Bible college in one year of time that she was there. Follow this carefully because I'm going to do a little math with you right now. Okay? I love math. My sister, in one year's time that was there, she went to school with this guy, who she didn't know. She knew him. She talked to him briefly, but she didn't know that he was a weirdo. There's one. Four guys the same year were kicked out for cross-dressing as women, dressing completely up as women, head to toe. Okay, that's, so what are we up to now? Five? Okay. There was another guy named Michael, who was just a flaming faggot, she said, a Filipino kid named Michael. Then there was a guy named, we're up to six, right? Then there was a guy named A.J. Hernandez. He quit school with his gay buddy. So there's two more, okay? So what are we up to now? Eight, okay? Then there were two guys who were on a, on a queer video on YouTube that was a private video only for certain people. She caught this video of them doing queer things on YouTube. That's two more. That makes ten. Okay, so my sister told me that in the time she was there, in one year, just a one year, let's just take a little slice of life here. One year at Golden State Baptist College. She personally knew of 10 sodomites. Are you listening? That's just what she knew. Now, do you think that there are others that she didn't know about? The ones that are going to get caught next year or the year after, or maybe she just didn't really come to contact with? She personally knew of 10. And don't get mad at me. I'm telling you the truth tonight. She personally knew of 10. How many students, 10 males, okay? How many students go to, to Golden State at that time? 500. So out of, and, and I asked her, I said, well, what was, this, what was the breakdown between male and female? She said it was about half and half. The school is about half men, half women. Okay? So that means there's 250 men, 250 women in the college. Ten of them she knew of as being sodomites, let alone however many else there were. Ten sodomites out of 250 men. That's one in 25. Okay? Now let's do a little more math. One in 25 are confirmed as sodomites. We know there's more than that. But this is what she knew for sure, one in 25. Okay? Now, how many men sleep in a dormitory at Golden State Baptist College? Four to a room. Okay, you see where I'm going with this? So that means that if you're to send your son to that college in that particular year, your boy is going to be sleeping with three men in the same room. Okay? One in 25 of them are for sure sodomized. Let, you know, confirmed. We know there's more than that. If there's ten that she knew of, but let's say there's only 10. Let's say all the other 240 of them are normal. That means that the chance of your little boy that you sent off to Bible college at age 17 or 18 of sleeping in a room in a bunk bed with a faggot is 1. It's 12% is what it is. Because it's 3 out of 25. Because your chances are 1 in 25, but there's 3 of them. So 3 out of 25, which is a 12% chance. That means that if your independent fundamental Baptist church sends eight students to Golden State, one of them is sleeping in a bed across the room from a pedophile, a sodomite, a homo, a freako. Are you listening to this? Now, I know that you love to gamble. You, you probably love to go up to the casino and change, cha change, cha change. But you know, you want to gamble sending your kid to a place? And you know, I plan on having a lot of kids. Who knows? Maybe I'll even have eight kids someday. I got number five on the way. <laughs> so if all my kids went through Golden State, one of them's going to be in the room with a stinking sodomite. Sleeping, totally vulnerable. Just going to bed 
fast asleep, totally vulnerable and exposed to this kind of pervert, pedophile, freak. You, you tell me I'm splitting hairs all you want. Tell me I'm making a mountain out of a molehill. Tell me I'm unreasonable, I'm ridiculous, I'm silly, it's the exception, not the rule. It may be the exception, but if there's 10 out of 250 from a personal witness, and I checked, I checked this stuff out on the internet and confirmed what she was saying to me. I checked out the facts on it. I'm going to tell you something. Send your kid to that Bible college, you're a fool. And I don't use that word lightly. You are a fool. Foolish. Oh, but that's just, it's just that Bible college. You go ahead and believe that all you want. When I was at Hiles Anderson, I knew kids there that were for sure sodomites. You know, uh, I mean, I can tell you their names. I can tell you about, you know, I don't know the exact, but, but I mean, this was, she, she knew a little more about it than I did. Because see, I, when I went to Bible college, I wasn't in the dorm. So I didn't know as many people. You got to understand, I was just going there, going to my classes, go to work, I'm done with it. My sister's living on campus. She was, had a little more exposure, Right? To the kids. She knew all the kids. And she said, you know, ten of them were sodomites. She said there were others that were feminine and geeky and girly and you know, she's not even counting them. She's just saying these are the ones. And one and this one guy that was a, that just he's sitting in a federal prison right now. I wonder if his I wonder if his Golden State degree is up in the cell. Do you think the Golden State degree signed by Dr. Treber is hanging in his cell? I wonder if it's hanging up in there. I don't know. It's a good question. But, but the point is, uh, it's not God's institution. God never said that a man should leave father and mother bunk up with a bunch of, bunch of possible perverts. He didn't say to do it. I ain't doing it. You know what? I'm all about the local church. And when it comes to the local church, there's no money is ever going to exchange hands on these premises as long as I'm the pastor. Nobody will ever hand somebody else money for goods and services, ever for any reason. The only money that's going to exchange hands on this property is when we pass the offering plate three times a week. That's when money's going to exchange hands. Nobody's going to hand a dollar bill to another in this church as long as I'm the pastor. For whether I don't care whether it's for salesmen, Amway, Mary Kay, church bookstore, sermon CDs, sermon DVDs, and if, and if, and if she ever tries to sell you a CD, she's... <laughs> Hey, she's pocketing that money because I don't see a, I don't see a dime of it. I'm just kidding. It's like, sure, I got that one. It's, uh, Five dollars, please. But hey, whether it be a CD, whether it be a cup of Starbucks, whether it be a lemon loaf for a or a frappuccino, uh, whether it be a Christian school tuition, Bible college tuition, no money will exchange hands here because. I happen to love Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So the problem here is a love issue. You love Jesus, you say, Jesus is angry. I don't want to make him mad. I want to make him happy. And I hope Faithful Word Baptist Church makes him happy. Oh, but there's a better way to do it. There's no better way than God's way. And making Jesus happy with the way we do it. And, and you know, I'd rather do it the I'd rather fail doing it the right way than succeed doing it the wrong way. Let's bow our in that word of prayer. Father, please just help Faithful Word Baptist Church to never become a house of merchandise. Help us to be a house of prayer, yes. A house of soul winning, yes. A house of preaching, yes. A house of Bible memorization, yes. A house of uh, righteousness and godliness, yes. But help it never to be a business. Never to be a house of merchandise. God, we love you and thank you for everything you do for us. Please help no one be offended by the sermon, but to understand that Truth is the truth, right's right, wrong's wrong, and to understand why we do things the way we do. We love you, and in Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, let's go ahead and sing one quick song. <clears throat>